Hi, today I'm in my eldest daughter's bedroom um, because she is uh, a child who is a, a big advocate of what I'm going to be talking about today, so I thought it was quite appropriate. So today, um, in Things We Love, I'm going to be talking about white noise. Now, white noise is something you, uh, if you've followed us for a while, you've probably heard us and read us. Um, mentioning lots and lots and lots and lots and that is because uh, well in my opinion white noise is a really easy simple affordable um, positive sleep association that uh, often the introduction of white noise noise or um, just adjusting how you're using white noise can make the world of difference to your little one's sleep so I'm going to be talking about white noise uh, why we love it, why we recommend it, the different types of white noise, um, how you can use it to get the best sleep out of your little one, and where you can find the right noise for you and your family. So when we're talking about white noise, um, white noise covers a very broad range of sounds. So uh, yes, there is a specific um, tone called white noise. We're referring to any kind of continuous rhythmic sound that is um, playing in the background. So uh, it might be the sound of waves. Which I know a lot of people find really relaxing. It could be the sound of rain. Could be a river. be the actual white noise tone which is um, almost a bit like radio static it could be um, there is I actually always prefer brown noise which is an actual thing <laughs> and it's uh, similar to white noise it's a staticky kind of sound but it's a bit more earthy and kind of guttural I suppose it's just a bit deeper Um, there is also a tone called pink noise, which is a slightly, a slightly higher pitch as well. So there's lots of different um, sounds you can choose from. There are also then sounds designed specifically for young babies, where there are more shushing, whooshing kind of sounds that, that your babies would have been used to in the womb. Um, repetitive shushing sounds, those kinds of things. So what does white noise do? <laughs> well... If I take you right back um, into the womb, so basically if you picture a baby's snug, cozy, warm womb environment, it is really noisy in there. So they have um, blood rushing around, your digestive system, they hear muffled sounds from the outside world, and um, the, the noise continuously inside the womb is reported to be um, around 90 decibels, which is pretty darn loud and that is what your baby is accustomed to that is literally all they've known so then if you think about it they are born and they're suddenly kind of thrust into this relatively sort of bright stimulating sterile environment and for some reason we tiptoe around and we go shh don't like don't wake the baby and and it's quiet and um, especially overnight so if you think about uh, wherever you're new baby is sleeping, whether it's in your room or in, in their own nursery, wherever they happen to be, it's quiet at night. And your baby is just going to be lying there going, hmm, like, what has just happened? This is weird. Like, the quiet is weird. So, white noise actually um, is one of those tools you can use to replicate the sensations that your little one was used to in the womb. So, um, especially for very young babies, we would recommend really quite, um, I say loud, but I don't mean 90 decibel loud, louder white noise and those repetitive shushing, whooshing sounds. We have one uh, on our Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play album called Baby Sleep, Shh, and it's just a repetitive shushing sound. That real that works like magic to just sort of lull babies, calm them, um, and help them to sleep better. So 
that's one reason that that white noise works is because it it replicates that environment that they were used to um it helps them so so the, the way white noise works for anybody adults children and and babies alike is you tune into the sound and you zone out to the world is how i like to think of it so there's this nice rhythmic sound um playing you're warm and cozy in your bed you're ready for sleep you just tune into that sound and it kind of hypnotizes you a little bit into a bit of a sleepy trance and then you can just switch off zone out go to sleep um the the other way that white noise works is that it works as a mask so it masks any other sounds that might be going on that might wake a sleeping baby or that might distract a baby who is trying to go to sleep from going to sleep and I'm talking about sort of more the loud random sounds like a door banging or the older sibling calling out from the other room or if we're talking about overnight it might be um, traffic noise outside it might be a horn honking it might be a siren it might be the birds waking up at 5 a.m. so white noise works as a mask as well it just provides that layer of constant sound that can disguise other sounds that would wake a sleeping baby or a child a little tip too if you've got a very very like a young newborn baby and your baby is crying or they're really overtired or overstimulated and you're trying to get them to go to sleep go into a, a dark room and turn up the white noise really loud. Uh, that is because babies that young can only concentrate on one thing at a time. So they will have to stop crying to hear the sound. And I know that sounds crazy, but it works. So turn up that shush sound or the white noise pretty loud and you're only gonna have it loud while they're really unsettled. So turn it up loud, um, rock them, pat them, swaddle them tightly, dark room once they've calmed down because they'll calm down to listen to the sound you can just gradually turn it down just gradually turn it down until it's nice comfortable comfortable level and then you can soothe your baby to sleep so how do you use white noise well we would always recommend using white noise for all of your little ones naps and for overnight and I mean the whole of overnight like bedtime to the morning basically um, so if you're whatever type of white noise you're using and we'll talk more about that soon make sure that uh, if it's say a 15 minute track that you're playing on um, an old phone via a speaker that you have it on repeat so that it doesn't go for 15 minutes and then stop uh, there are um, some white noise devices out there that do just play for a limited amount of time so those are designed for you to help get your child to sleep at the start of their nap or at the start of bedtime but in our experience what happens is that they're used to going to sleep with the white noise on the white noise turns off after 15 20 minutes and your child wakes up during their nap and they can't hear the noise anymore and they won't go back to sleep without it because that's how they knew to go to sleep in the first place so that's where this it, it comes in as a positive sleep association something that white noise is really really helpful for is if you are teaching your little one to self settle so if you're working if they're coming through that sort of four month regression and onwards period and you're working on getting them to fall asleep independently um, and to resettle themselves after their sleep cycles white noise is a really great tool because again it's just it's one of those things that they can rouse from their sleep cycle they can hear it playing and they go oh yeah that's that's the sound that I sleep to and roll over and go back to sleep. So if you're starting to work on self-settling with your little ones and you're not already using white noise, introduce it as a really, really easy, valuable tool in this sort of self-settling period. What I would suggest doing is creating a bit of a routine with it with your little ones. So uh, before naps and before bedtime at night, have a little wind down routine, do your usual bedtime routine. Maybe it's a, a bath at night, um, a, a feed, a cuddle, a song, a story. Um, and you can have a smaller version of this before their naps as well and then go into their room turn on the white noise do whatever it is that you do in your child's bedroom as a wind down routine and pop them into bed hearing that sound is every time before sleep approaches is a really strong cue to your little one that what is happening further down this particular track is sleep and so they get used to these same steps repeated in the same order and they will know that the white noise goes on 
mum puts me in my sleeping bag, I go into my bed, she sings me a song and, and sleep is next. So it's a really positive sleep association. It's a really positive cue that your child re quite quickly will come to associate with falling asleep. And um, it's as simple as that. Now in terms of the volume of how you'd use the white noise, we recommend and um, experts and articles and studies recommend playing white noise about as loud as conversational speech or about as loud as a shower, which is between 55 and 65 decibels. So nowhere near as loud as the 90 decibels they were used to in the womb. Um, you can of course play the white noise at any level that you're comfortable with, but we wouldn't recommend going over 65 decibels for continued use. The other thing to, um, to bear in mind is that like any sleep association, your, your baby or your little one will get used to it. So they will use, be used to sleeping with white noise. And um, that's the same as any sleep association. They might be used to sleeping in a swaddle or in a baby sleeping bag. They might be used to using a pacifier or sucking their thumb or having a little cuddly or uh, you nursing them to sleep or rocking them to sleep. It's just what they get used to and it's how they learn how to fall asleep. The, the good thing about white noise is it's very easy to wean your child away from that sleep association. But the other thing is, and you know, we get asked questions like, will my child come to depend on the white noise too much? Yes, they will depend on it, but that's not a bad thing. I think in the whole world of things that your child can depend on to fall asleep, white noise is not a bad one. It's a very easy, simple, affordable sleep association. It's not like a little cuddly that they could lose or you have to try and replace and you have to wash every second day. Um, it's not a pacifier which is quite complicated and a very drawn out process to get your little one away from a pacifier at, at bedtime. Um, same with being rocked to sleep or nursed to sleep. You know, that can be a bit of a, an involved process. White noise is just easy. And you know, I. <laughs> I kind of think, who cares if your baby is two years old and you still use white noise overnight? That's not, to me, that's not really a big deal. And the reason that actually I'm making this video in my daughter's room, so she's nearly nine, she, of her own volition, only really in the last year or so, has asked for white noise at night. Um, so she you had white noise as a baby. I didn't use it for her for years and years and years. I used it a little bit when there was a period where her and her younger brother were sharing a bedroom, which is where it's great because it just masks the sound of the other kids sleeping or if one kid wakes up early, it's not a big deal. So if you've got children who are room sharing, some nice waves or gentle white noise is a really good tool to use there. Um, and then in the last sort of year or so, she started to imagine she was hearing um, flies in her room at night and crickets outside and things and I think she just sort of reached a, a funny age and and she was sort of cottoning on to every little sound she could nighttime sound she could hear and so she asked to use white noise um so she has a little white noise machine that just sits on her dressing table and um I'll link a, a similar machine that we recommend in the description box below. And every night she just comes in, turns on her white noise, and that's how she goes to sleep. She can sleep without it. If we go away, depending on where we're going, sometimes I take the white noise machine because it's portable. If we're going to stay with my mom or something, we'll take it. If we're going to stay in a hotel, we probably won't take it. And she can sleep without it. It's not the end of the world. But um, it's just one of those things I don't mind. I don't mind that, she's, that she sleeps with white noise because if that helps her sleep better, then I'm all for it. And in actual fact, my husband still sleeps with white noise. So my husband is, um, historically hasn't been the best sleeper and he's sort of worked out what works for him. So he has a fan that sits next to our bed but not pointed at us, <laughs> especially in winter. Um, it just sort of blows against the wall and it's just that nice, gentle, repetitive sound. He has it on every night um, and, it, and it just helps him sleep. He knows that it helps him sleep better. And actually, I probably am so used to it now that I 
if he's not there or if I'm away somewhere else, it does sound weird to not have the fan sound. But if we are away, um, he will just use white noise on Spotify on his phone. So it's just one of those things. It's so easy and so um, affordable and sensible to implement that I kind of think, why wouldn't you do it? You know, just choose something, choose a sound that you you like, choose a sound that you're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be um, that staticky, like white noise, the white noise tune, tone. I don't overly like that, but I do like the brown noise. I do like the sound of the fan. So choose something that, that you just, you find relaxing and you're comfortable with. So lastly, um, how do you get white noise? <laughs> so we have developed our own white noise um, for babies and then a separate white noise for adults albums um, because it's something we recommend all the time and it made sense to us to have our own album so we could say, look, this is the perfect example of, of how of what white noise should be. So have a look, um, I'll link it all below as well. We're on Spotify, Google Play, um, and iTunes, and a bunch of other music platforms. So you could either stream it, um, what Amanda, co-founder of Little Ones, used to do is she had an old um, phone or an old iPad and just plugged into a little speaker in her kids' rooms, and she would just stream it from Spotify straight into their rooms and it was really simple and if you have it on repeat then um, the track just keeps going and going. You can buy white noise machines as I um, briefly talked about before and again I'll link our recommendations below. You can always um, resort to using a fan, putting a fan in your child's room. Fans are really really great white noise down and it's the perfect volume as well. I would be very wary of, um, like I said, if you can avoid using a machine or a, or a sound that turns off after a specific time that you can't set to repeat, um, that's not going to be overly helpful for your child coming in and out of their sleep cycles. Um, so find something where it plays a nice continuous sound. The music streaming and white noise machines that can be um, endlessly played are your best choices hands down. The good thing about white noise is it's really easy to wean your child away from using white noise. All you do is just turn it down. It's actually as simple as that. So if you ever decide your, your one-year-old or two-year-old or 10-year-old doesn't want to, to have white noise, or you don't want them to have white noise anymore, every couple of days, just turn, it, turn the volume down a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more until eventually um, it's gone. And it's as simple as that. So I hope that's helped some of you who were a bit unsure about how or why we recommend white noise or what kind of white noise to use and how to implement it with your little ones. All of the links I've talked about I will put in the description box below and of course if you've got any questions or comments you're welcome to add them as well. Thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you soon.